I am Dr. Albert Mensa, and today we're going to talk about the difference between your methylation design, as in your methylation status, versus your methylation performance. Now, a lot of people have been studying and reading and, and discussing methylation, but there's something very important that many people don't understand. Testing processes for methylation can revolve around several different concepts. We use the histamine test, the whole blood histamine test, to determine methylation status. And many people are saying, well, gosh, my symptoms are very much like an undermethylator. I'm perfectionistic. I'm a bit of a control freak. I'm extremely gifted academically. I'm just pushed to performance. I do everything perfectly, and yet I have anxiety, depression, so I'm a, I'm a classic undermethylator. On the other side, the people who say, well, you know, I'm really very creative. I'm, I'm just a person who loves music and the arts, and you know, I don't like following rules, and I'm not very regimented along those lines, and I just think I'm a classic overmethylator. Okay, that's great. So you do your histamine test, and yes, you are a low histamine for un or overmethylation, or your high histamine for undermethylation. Yet, when you try to actually treat yourself or someone is treating you based upon those particular conditions, you find that maybe you're not responding very well to the protocol that's been given you. And you're very sure, you're quite certain of your chemical testing, and so you're very, very confused. Well, let's look at some of the possibilities. So, firstly, you may have indeed uncovered a patient's methylation design. But now, there's a difference between design and performance. So, what does that exactly mean? Well, every engineer on the planet knows that you may design a ship or a car one way on paper, but it may not exactly perform the way you designed it in real life. Well, your system, of course, is a beautifully designed machine. And you may be designed to be an undermethylator. But you know what? There can be a glitch in the system that kind of either inhibits a treatment protocol or that is, stops it from working very well because there's some factors you're not aware of going on. So, for example, maybe you actually have a glitch in the conversion of one enzyme to another that allows methylation to actually occur. So even if you're giving all the right nutrients that would help somebody improve their condition so that depression gets better and anxiety gets better and the negative aspects of undermethylation get better, or some of the challenges involved in overmethylation should be getting better, but they're not, it's possible that your body may not be actually performing the way it's designed. So let's talk about some of those potentials. Let's say you are an internet scientist all on your own. And you've heard that using folic acid, for example, is a great way to treat overmethylation. So you take lots and lots of folic acid and you've got all your vegetables, your dark green leafy vegetables, and you're eating them all the time. And you may not realize it, but you may have turned yourself into a functional undermethylator. Your system now has been over-treated, and now it literally is functioning more like an under-methylated system. In other words, you kind of overshot the mark. So now your body is actually under-methylating, even though you're designed to be an over-methylator. You went from extreme to extreme and didn't know it instead of being right there in the middle. Now let's go to the other side. You're a classic undermethylator. You've done everything properly by the book. You've read all the, the details out there. You've read all the scientific studies and your research, and you've been giving yourself tons of methylating products. Vitamin methylated B12, methylated this, methylated that, methylated everything. Yet you're not doing as well as you should, and guess what? It is possible now that your body may be not normally methylating, but it could be over-methylating because of an excess of methylating agents. 
you weren't aware of it and you didn't know it. But now there's actual testing, one called a methylation profile, that can actually tell you what your body is doing as opposed to how your body was designed. So we can actually determine now if maybe you're an undermethylator, but you're actually undermethylating, normally methylating, or perhaps over methylating. And on the other side, that wonderful creative person that you are, that over methylator, maybe you've been over treated and now you're functionally under methylating. Now to add more confusion, you say, well, wait a minute, I still have my great characteristics. I'm still just marvelously creative or I'm still highly perfectionistic and overachieving. But then why do you still have anxiety? Why do you still have depression? Or maybe it's actually worse than it was before. Or maybe you've swung to the other side. Maybe you're a little bit manic. Okay, that too can happen. Well, depending on the chemistry and depending on the challenges, whether they're enzyme challenges, genetic blockages, or even just the wrong nutrients, the wrong balance, the wrong combination of nutrients, or maybe the nutrients actually don't work. Either way, the system can be affected in multiple directions so that despite who you are designed to be, your body may not actually function in that capacity. And there's the difference between methylation status versus methylation performance. This is why it's actually very important to work with a professional in this process, because you can't determine yourself how your body is actually working. I know many people use their symptoms as an example, but it doesn't necessarily mean that what it is that you're doing is actually based upon the biochemical testing process and your own treatment, or if there's a different epigenetic process that's possibly working. Now remember we talked about epigenetics, meaning how the environment affects gene expression. In other words, how basically the environment affects you and how your body, your system performs, how you think, how you feel, a variety of different mechanisms can come into play. Epigenetics can involve emotions, your outside environment, your boss, your family. It can involve chemicals. It can involve the food that you eat. All of those things can affect how your system functions. This is why it's very important for you to work with a professional. Talk to your doctor, do the right tests, find out not only what your status is, but actually how your system is responding to your nutrient therapy or treatment process. I'm Dr. Albert Benson.